Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Morphe Auction House, taking a look at some of the guns they are going to be selling in their upcoming April of 2019 Premier Firearms Auction. What we have here today is a Carcano. Of course, it's not the Carcano you might be expecting. This is Salvatore Carcano's first major substantial firearms invention, and it is a needle-fire conversion of existing Italian muzzle-loading rifles. This came about basically because the Prussians beat the Austrians at Sadova, or Sadova, I think it's Sadova, uh, in 1866, in the Pru uh, Austro-Prussian War. The Prussians had dreisy needle fire rifles, and the Prussian and the Austrians had muzzle loading rifles. And the needle fires were able to fire substantially more rapidly than the muzzle loaders. And kind of like the Battle of Plevna, um, Sadova would have repercussions around the world for uh, military arms decisions. Even if the facts are debatable as to what actually happened, the people's impressions of them had a very real impact on military decision making. So uh, in particular, we're addressing Italy's reaction to this, but it's worth also looking at France's. And part of France's reaction to this, this battle is to go, well, we really need to stop, stop screwing around and pick a new rifle. And they adopted the Chassepo needle rifle. Uh, the Italians had the same concern, like, okay, our muzzle-loading rifles are clearly inferior. Uh, we're behind the curve. We're in big trouble if we get into a war with these guns. We need to come up with something new. But the Italians took a little bit of a different tack. They were, yeah, they were actually much wiser in that they recognized, look, technology is changing very rapidly. And if we, we don't want to run the risk of sinking a whole bunch of money into buying, you know, a ton of brand new rifles in some cutting edge technology for our troops, only to discover in another couple years that they've been rendered completely obsolete by yet another new technology. Which is, in fact, exactly what would happen to the French. Their Carcanos, or their uh, Chassepos, would be very quickly e eclipsed by uh, metallic cartridge firing rifles. And they would have, they'd, they'd build millions of Chassepos, and then have to turn around less than ten years later and build millions of Gras rifles. So the Italians wanted to avoid that. So they looked at, they were, they were trying to do two different things at the same time. They wanted to adopt, they wanted to come up with a new technology for a brand new rifle that they could make in small numbers for, you know, frontline troops, shock troops. The guys, you know, buy, buy just a small number of rifles for the, the best units. And then they also wanted some cheap thing that they could do to their existing guns to convert them into something more modern. Um, and by cheap they wanted, like, no more than 10 lira per gun for whatever conversion they ended up using. So they looked at a couple different types of guns. They looked at uh, separated primer types of systems, where you've got a cartridge and a separate primer. Um, Manso systems, Albini systems, the Lindner system, among others. And then they also looked at needle fire paper cartridges, like the Dreyse. And then they looked at modern, you know, self-contained metallic cartridges. And as far as conversions, they came to the conclusion that the metallic cartridge wasn't ideal, because their guns were all like 17 or 17 and a half millimeter bores, and metallic cartridge ammo for that was going to be pretty heavy. And this is still a technology that's in its infancy. So they kind of ruled that out, and they ruled out all of the separate primer systems, probably being because they just were a little too old-fashioned, and they settled on a needle fire system. So Salvatore Carcano came up with uh, a way to convert the existing muzzle loading rifles into needle fires. And he looked at the different needle fire systems out there, and he ended up choosing the Dirsch Baumgarten system, which is one that we've basically never heard of anymore today. Those guns are extremely rare, but it was basically an improved version of the Dreyse. Uh, and he chose that as the basis for his conversion. So let's take a look at exactly what he did. I think the first thing that's important to remember with the Carcano needle fire is that it is not a ground up uh, new rifle. Um, both of the other major systems, the Chassepo and the the Dreyse were brand new guns made from scratch as needle fires. This is actually a conversion of a muzzle loading musket or rifle. Uh, so what we have here is the existing barrel that has been basically sliced up um, and a bolt added to it. All of the accoutrements from the original muzzle loader have been uh, maintained. So you've got this kind of funky uh, bayonet lug out here. Uh, cleaning rods were left on the artillery guns, but most of the other conversions had the cleaning rods removed. Um, and I should say this is an artillery musket tune. Um, our original hardware on here. Because they kept the original barrel, that helps keep the cost down. We have a sight here. The markings are long obliterated, um, but it was basically a 100, 200, 300 meter 
uh, adjustments on here uh, for for your sighting. The only real marking visible uh, is the serial number here on the buttstock, and even that is a little bit hard to read. Overall, this is a very light rifle, much more so than you would expect picking it up, largely because largely, <laughs> because the bore is 17 and a half millimeter. This is a, a huge uh, projectile by today's standards, and so while the barrel looks very thick, it's actually mostly hollow. Now, the operating system for this rifle is a little bit quirky and unusual. So uh, we have a basically a safety lock down here in the trigger guard. And in order to open the bolt, you have to pull this down. This uh, is basically a plunger that locks up into the bolt and prevents you from lifting the bolt handle. So this is the fired position of the gun, by the way. Uh, the bolt, uh, the locking system is simply the root of the bolt handle locking against this bit of the old barrel. Uh, you can notice this lug here is where the percussion cap originally, the percussion nipple originally was, and it's been basically just milled off. Now to open the bolt, we're going to pull this down, which is a little hard for you to see. Then we can actually lift the bolt handle, pull this back, and it'll open only this far, and then and then stop. If I want to pull the bolt all the way out, I can do that by pulling this lug down again, and pulling the trigger, and pulling the bolt out. With that out, you can see the plug right there, and that is the, the button connected to the front of the trigger guard. So that's your basically your safety lock. And then we have two bits here that move when I pull the trigger. So the rear hook goes down, and this front plunger comes up. That is actually the firing sear, and this has a fairly unique firing system. If we look at just the bolt here, there is a flat spring with a little locking shoulder on it right there, and that's connected to our needle. So when I pull this back, that flat spring is going to come back and it's going to pop into this little hole. When you're ready to fire, this hole is pointing straight down, and when you pull the trigger and this plunger comes up right here, what it's actually doing is pushing that in. I don't think I can really do it, I can sort of do it by hand here. Once, there we go, once that goes all the way in, it releases uh, the, the striker to actually go forward and fire. Now we also have a decocker here, which I have to put the, the bolt in the gun to show you. But, so going back a step, once I've got the bolt in the rifle, and I go ahead and open the bolt, right here, as I pull the bolt back, this cocking piece is going to trip over that hook, right there. You saw the hook pop up. And now that's going to hold the back end of the cocking piece in place when I pull the bolt forward. So I can open the bolt all the way out like this. That gives me space to load a cartridge in here, a paper cartridge. Uh, these used a Minier style of ball, so a hollow base bullet. Uh, you would then have a primer in the base of the bullet, and powder behind it, all wrapped up in a paper wad. And these actually used a, uh, a heavy rubber, uh, basically a rubber base plate on the cartridge. And that was the obturator. So where the Carcano, or <laughs> I keep saying Carcano, where the Chassepo has a rubber obturator built into the bolt, and where the Dreyse has a pair of mating cone, uh, mechanical fit cones, this depended on relatively close tolerances for the machining, plus a rubber plug on the base of the cartridge to provide a gas seal. And it was tolerable. Not great. Um, not the best system, but not the worst, maybe, either. So when this goes forward, our striker is caught here. I can then push this. That'll half compress the, the firing pin spring. Drop that down. The bolt handle is now locked in place. I then have to cock the striker the rest of the way. And then when I pull the trigger, the safety hook is going to drop, and our sear is going to rise so that the gun fires. What's cool about this is in this position, if I don't pull the trigger, I've got a hook that's holding the striker in place so that it can't go forward and unintentionally fire, uh, say when the gun's not locked up. That's good. I can also cock this fully and then take this safety tab and work it very much like a Carcano bolt action rifle. That has just decocked the rifle. It's taken the spring tension off of the needle so that Nothing happens here at all if I pull the trigger. There's just no spring tension left in the system. So you can have the gun locked closed with a cartridge loaded, but totally safe because there's no spring tension on, uh, on the, the striker. And then all you have to do to 
recock it, is uh, push that in and rotate it shut, and then it's ready to fire. The other cool thing I can do here is I can decock this, and then if I pull the trigger I can actually pull this completely out of the gun. I can then also unscrew the face of the bolt, got that, and then we've got our bolt body, and the main mechanical guts of the bolt. So you should be able to see how this works fairly well now. This is a little flat spring that is dovetailed into the head with the needle, and this is going to, is what holds the, uh, the firing pin in its cocked position, and we've got our spring captive between the needle head there and the base of this tube. So I can pull this back to put on spring tension. When, you're, when you have this in the bolt it's going to come all the way back, lock there, until you push up on this spring, in like that, that releases it, and it fires. So the first of these conversions were actually produced in 1867, and that was 18,000 of them for the Bersaglieri. Uh, after that they would follow up in 1869 with conversions for the um, uh, Carabinieri, the military police sort of units, uh, and then in 1871 they would go ahead and do a lot of conversions for their artillery corps. This is an artillery corps, uh, artillery carbine, it's an 1844-67, that's the 1844 artillery, well, musket. Uh, Muscatoon, really, uh, converted with the 1867 Carcano needle fire system. And most of the, the examples of these that survive today are in fact these artillery pieces. Um, a lot of these were converted into shotguns, they were scrapped, they... It's important to remember that these still have iron barrels on them for the most part, not modern steel. Uh, you know, they were cheap conversions at the time, they were better than muzzle loaders, but they pretty quickly became very obsolete. Um, Italy selected the Vetterli system for its new uh, bolt action system, uh, and then the Vetterli Vitali update in 1887, and it wasn't very long before they really didn't need these. Um, they were never used in any significant conflict, so they're pretty unknown guns today. Um, and, and I think they're really cool, they're like that third third best needle fire system. Uh, <laughs> the Italian is the third best needle fire. Uh, behind the Shuspo and the Dreyse, and it's uh, pretty cool to get a chance to take a look at this one. If you have a collection of antique rifles, or needle fire guns, or Italian rifles, and you would like to add this cool piece to it, it is of course coming up for sale here at Morphe's. So take a look at the description text below the video, you'll find a link there to ForgottenWeapons.com, from whence you can click over to Morphe's catalog, take a look at their pictures, their description, their price estimate, all that sort of stuff, and place a bid right there through their website if you're so inclined. Thanks for watching.